Hope y'all are having a great weekend. Welcome to another episode of Murders, Mysteries, and More. My name is Kaylee. And my name is Desi. Be sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell next to the subscribe button to turn on post notifications. Before we get into this case, we always encourage those who have useful information to any unsolved case, please report it to your local police and sheriff department. We always hear horror stories about kids getting kidnapped from third world countries. In America, the amount of preventive measures we have taken to this day have helped tremendously lower the kidnapping rates. However, we are still oblivious to the thought that our kids are safe. In 2020 alone, 340,000 kids went missing in the United States. There are even some even more disturbing statistics. Until the year 2000, kidnapping wasn't a federal crime. Think about all those kids before the year of 2000 went missing. In 2020 alone, 0.11% of all children kidnapping cases were actually stranger abductions. Girls between the ages of 12 and 17 are the most common victims. You can probably figure out why. Today we will be diving into the 1980s disappearance of Jackie K. Boyer. Jackie K. Boyer was born on May 7, 1968 in California. She had golden locks with brown eyes. Other unique features Jackie had was a small scar on her right forearm and a small mole on her mid back. She was 12 years old at the time of her disappearance, 5 feet tall, weighing about 90 pounds. Jackie had her whole life ahead of her. At the time of her disappearance, she was residing in Windsor County, California. She also attended school at Star. Windsor County, California was a small rural town of only about 5,000 residents. Saturday, May 24th, in 1980, three days after her disappearance, this was Memorial Weekend. That weekend, the Windsor Waterworks had its grand opening. Everyone in the town was stoked. The water park consisted of 18 acres with four water slides, various pools, and a game room. Construction for Windsor Waterworks had begun early 1980. The park stated that weekend they saw 8,000 visitors and later that year, around 250,000 visitors had come. This was a lot of visitors for such a small little California town. May 22nd, 1980, 7 a.m., Jackie's parents discovered that she was missing from her bedroom that she shared with her little brother. They also had found a chair outside her window that obviously had been pried open. The last time her family saw her was the previous night at 9 p.m. when they tucked her in for bed. There was also no indication of struggle, but we cannot completely rule out an abduction. Jackie's younger, nine-year-old brother, Randy, did not recall her leaving. He was a heavy sleeper. The last thing Jackie was wearing was a pink nightgown. Her maroon jacket, blue tennis shoes, and seven dollars of cash was also missing. Her disappearance was exactly two weeks after her 12th birthday. In 1983, three years after her disappearance, her father had committed suicide and her mother had passed away in 1987. Monday, May 9th, 1980, the Windsor Waterworks hosted a casting for extras for a commercial for advertising the new park. 125 of these extras were young children. However, since the weather did not permit that day, they decided to reschedule the shoot. Jackie would have wanted to be a part of this shoot. Unfortunately, with many sickos in this world, someone could have lured her in at night or had been watching her. Since we do not know how close Jackie was to this new water park, we do not know if this was the case. Another theory is Jackie would have decided to sneak out at night to explore the park. Maybe she was curious to see what all the hype was about. As a result, someone could have easily snatched the little girl up. Unfortunately, due to the media's severe lack of coverage, there isn't a whole lot of information about this case. Each year that passes by that a person is missing, it is less likely that they are still alive. We only found a couple articles on this case. There are many different reasons why this little 12-year-old girl went missing. We hope more unsolved disappearances like Jackie get the justice they deserve. Here are some unanswered questions. Why did the media fail to provide coverage for this case? Usually when young girls go missing, the media goes crazy. 
such as the John Bennett case. Why not this one? So I do find it a little bit disheartening that there wasn't that many articles on this case. There wasn't really a whole lot of coverage. I think one of the reasons why there wasn't a lot of coverage on this case is that Jackie was from a smaller town so obviously the media was a lot less bigger and so while there might have been a little bit of local coverage there wouldn't have been as much national coverage because it was such a small town. Another reason is that before the year 2000, and this was in 1980, sadly, children abductions were not considered a federal offense yet. So I think that also has something to do with it, that some people denied that stuff like this could happen. They think because we're a first world country that we're completely safe from these things, and that is far from the truth. And then the last reason is that her family probably didn't have a whole lot of money and a whole lot of fame to begin with. Obviously, she grew up in a small town and there isn't a lot of information about her family. And usually cases that tend to go viral, those people, their parents have a big influence in the world. So they probably just thought of her as another Jane Doe and didn't really want to put that much effort because her parents were not famous and they didn't have a whole lot of money. Did Jackie run away from her home and why? Even though the window had been pried up, there was no indication of struggle. It is very possible for Jackie to have ran away instead of being adoptive, of course. Children are generally, especially around this age, more curious when it comes to a lot of things. Jackie could have gotten very curious about this park and all stuff, decided to go around at night when nobody was there to look at and all stuff, and decided to sneak out her window, of course. Maybe she got lost along the way and never found her way home, or maybe somebody picked her up on the way there. So what started out as her running away and getting curious and all stuff could have turned into her being abducted. Yeah, I do think that it is very possible that Jackie did run away because, like you said, little kids get curious. This park had not even opened yet, but it was about to open, so she could have wanted to see what kind of rides were there, sneak in at night, maybe go in the pool, maybe she was going to meet up with a friend or something, and then, like you said, got kidnapped along the way. And that could explain the chair as well that she used this chair from her house to climb out the window because it doesn't exactly state where this chair came from. It also could explain why there's not very much evidence as far as what happened because it couldn't have really been the like, original crime scene. It could have just been where she snuck out. Her being abducted could have been somewhere else. So the crime scene could have been anywhere. Did Jackie get kidnapped from her home and if so by who? This also could have happened as well. With this one, I feel like if this did really happen, I feel like we would have probably seen more of that indication of a struggle, maybe seeing some like blood from somewhere. And we didn't really see that. We did see that like the windows were like open and there was marks on them. Obviously, that could indicate someone still took her. They could have given her some sort of drug and dragged her away and that could have been why there was no indication of struggle. Also, like she could have been sleeping whenever she was kidnapped. So they couldn't, so she couldn't have really screamed out because maybe she was a really heavy sleeper and didn't notice until she woke up that she was not at home anymore and she was in some strange place. If so, by who would have kidnapped her? So it could be honestly anybody. Now, it is more common for children that are abducted to somewhat know their abductors. So it could have been easily a neighbor. It could have been someone at school that was grooming her and they knew exactly where she lived and decided to kidnap her. It could have also been someone that was stalking her at the park if she did go to the park. Very true. Could be anyone. Also, if she was kidnapped from her home, you would think you would maybe find like a residual uh, or partial fingerprint on the window. 
even if she opened the window herself, you would think you would find her fingerprints as well. <laughs> if she was kidnapped from her home, why did they not take her nine-year-old brother as well? Could this have been a result of sex trafficking the young girl? If she was kidnapped, a reason why they didn't want to take her nine-year-old brother was maybe they were specifically fixated on her, being that maybe she was some predator's type, or the fact that she was a girl. This would have turned them off of her brother, so their intention was to just sneak in, kidnap her, hope to not get caught, and leave the nine-year-old brother the way he was, untouched. Could this be sex trafficking? Very possible. Sex trafficking has been around for hundreds of thousands of years, sadly, and especially with younger girls, it is ten times more likely for them to be sex trafficked because there are a lot of child predators out there. There are a lot of people in power who will buy girls, which is very sick, but it's unfortunately the society we have always lived in. Yeah, 100% agree with you. And also, if they tried to take her brother, then they would have been, have to make sure they were able to keep both kids quiet. And the brother was already sound asleep, so they might have felt like they might have woken him up on accident, which would have made it more difficult for them to take him as well. So they might have just only took her because of that. And like you said, with the sex trafficking, it's sadly so common in... America and many, many other countries. If she truly was kidnapped, why did the kidnapper leave the chair outside? Wouldn't this have made it easier for police to catch the abductor? So obviously with leaving the chair out, you would think that there would be fingerprints left on there. And there's no like real mention of where this chair comes from, if it comes from the home or not, which would be helpful in us knowing if she actually ran away and was abducted somewhere else versus if it wasn't from the home then it would have more indicated that their house was more of the crime scene. I do think it is a little bit weird that if someone did kidnap her from the home they just left the chair outside because that would have just left fingerprints and they would have possibly been able to find out where this chair had been bought from and they might be able to locate the kidnapper. However, this could have been more of an indication that she actually was not kidnapped from home and this was actually a chair from her house and she wanted to go explore the park at night and that might be why there is really no mention of that in the article because the police, you know, they already figured, found out that the chair was from there and she did try to run away but again, they don't really specify that in any of the articles. Had someone from the water park have lured her in at night, it was noted that the water park did host a couple casting calls for extras that included children a couple weeks before. Very possible somebody could have been posing as a producer, executive person, whoever, for these casting calls. and. They could have told her, hey, come back at this time of night and do our own casting call, blah, blah, blah. Being a 12-year-old girl, everybody is like so starstruck to be in a video or a commercial or whatever because we think we're going to get famous from that. Very possible she could have went along with it, decided to sneak out, met up with this person, and they could have kidnapped her and done who knows what to her, of course. They also could have lured her in different ways, whether it was to the water park or not. They could have lured her anywhere. We don't know because unfortunately we don't have very much evidence to go on. If she was killed by a water park worker, why hasn't her body been found? Where could they have disposed her body? So there is also this theory floating around that one of the water park workers actually was involved in deaths. The thing about that is since they background checks, they'll always clear everything completely and people can slip through the cracks and actually be, the water park could have hired them and this person could have saw her and a bunch of other little girls and taken advantage of her. The reason why the body hasn't been found is that whoever did kill her, they knew exactly a remote location to dispose of her body and 
get rid of it without the police finding out and this honestly could be anywhere this was in a smaller town in rural california in california then that was kind of when it started like booming a lot it's, it wasn't nearly as densely populated as it is now so they could have took her her body anywhere in the desert and placed it anywhere and nobody would have been able to find it because animals could have gotten in it or it could be in such a really random location that people do not know of it could be on some sort of private land we unfortunately don't know why did jackie go missing exactly two weeks after her 12th birthday was it just a coincidence it could be very coincidental coincidental timing coincidental placing and all that stuff or it could have been somebody that she knew was watching her and waiting until she turned 12. So they could have been watching for a while and waiting until she turned 12 and waited for the right opportunity to take her for their own sick little game. Jackie's father sadly did commit suicide three years after her disappearance. Why did he kill himself? Could the family have been involved in her own disappearance? So it is really sad that her dad did end up committing suicide. There's a couple of reasons why he could have. One is whenever your child does go missing or if you lose any sort of child, that is such a horrible pain that nobody should have to go through. That definitely is going to really mess with you for the rest of your life. You're going to feel like, oh, I should have done better. I should have paid more attention. And you're going to live with this guilt. And that guilt is going to really kind of upset you. And he could have killed himself because he was really depressed. And he felt like he did not protect his daughter. And that was the one job that he had. And he beat himself over that and thought that killing himself would be best. This was completely like all of his fault. There is also a theory that the family could have been involved the whole entire time. There's still like not enough evidence to say that the family had an involvement in it, but it is possible that the family themselves could have killed their own daughter and gotten rid of her for a number of reasons. Maybe they didn't want to deal with her anymore or whatever, but there's also an extreme lack of evidence that would make the parents seem suspicious. If the family was involved somehow, why did they choose to get rid of their daughter? They could have chose to get rid of their daughter because they felt like supporting two children was maybe too much. So, you know, they could have loved their son more than their daughter and just wanted to a way out of it so maybe they decided to just get rid of her or have somebody get rid of her or drop her off somewhere to where she would be conveniently kidnapped by a child predator. Could one of the neighbors have been grooming her? So it is very possible like I mentioned multiple times a lot of kids tend to know their kidnappers. Unfortunately in a lot of neighborhoods even with tons of kids they're still and it's really sick, but there are still registered sex offenders living in these neighborhoods. I don't know why they're still allowed to be in those neighborhoods. They shouldn't. But at this time, a offender could have been living in this neighborhood and they could have been grooming her for a while, for like a really long time. And maybe they decided to get rid of her because at this time, Jackie was starting to become more knowledgeable about her own self and maybe she slipped up and said something to her parents about this neighbor that was grooming her. They didn't want to get in trouble, so they went and decided to kill her. Back then, a lot of kids had a little bit more freedom 
you would see kids playing out in their yards for a lot longer at night. As a result, letting your kids play out by themselves for such a long time can leave them very vulnerable to becoming kidnapped, especially if they don't have a lot of awareness and kids back then did not have cell phones or anything. So she obviously wouldn't have been able to call 911 for help. The only thing she would have been able to do is scream for help. It also could have been someone that the parents thought that they trusted this neighbor and this neighbor was not exactly who they said they were. Very true. Just because somebody says something about themselves or portrays themselves as something that they really aren't doesn't mean they're not hiding something like the fact that they like to groom children or if she's still alive, where could she be? That's a really good question as far as if she is still alive, which, you know, the chances of her being alive do go down every year, but at this point it's so unlikely, unfortunately, which is very sad. But if she was alive, I would think maybe she's in another state or another city. Maybe, hopefully, she broke away from whoever kidnapped her or found maybe a better life from her parents if they truly did not want her, like some theorize of course. She could also be in another country, you never know how far she could have gotten if she was kidnapped. Yeah, she could be in Mexico for all we know because obviously she lived in California so the Mexican border isn't even that far away from there so she could be kidnapped from somebody from there and back then there wasn't as strict of border patrol they could have easily slipped her through and but yeah I'm, I agree with you I don't think that she is still alive it'd be wonderful if she was but at this point it's very unlikely why did the police fail to further investigate this case this was in 1980 and not until to the year 2000 had kidnapping been labeled as a federal offense. So I think that's one of the main reasons why the police didn't put as much effort into that. People are not going to take that as serious. The police also probably thought that she probably ran away and more likely got hit by a car or something rather than looking into her being kidnapped because the fact that they didn't really see an indication of struggle at the house also the water park could have known more about it and they could have paid to really lawyer up hit this dirty secret and the police wouldn't have been really able to investigate them because this water park had so much money that there really was really no point in trying to further investigate this case also, there was like not a whole lot of evidence that the police really had to go off of. The only thing they really had to go off of was the window had obviously been pried open and there was a chair outside. Some of the windows had marks, but other than that, they didn't really have any evidence from any park employees or anything. What do we believe that happened the night of her disappearance? I myself personally believe that she decided to sneak out of her bedroom, used a chair to get down out of the window and all stuff, and met up with somebody, whether it was a neighbor that she knew or one of the people that was involved in the, you know, casting calls at the park, and then was abducted from there and potentially killed. Yeah, I definitely feel like it's definitely more of that theory because it would make sense that she was only five feet tall and so obviously she would need a chair to get out of the window at that age and with the opening of the park it would make sense that she would want to go there at night and kind of like explore the park maybe meet up with a friend parks water parks are especially like any kind of like open space like that with a bunch of kids <sighs> kids are very vulnerable in those kinds of places to kidnapping. You hear all the time that whenever parents take kids to festivals and stuff, they get bracelets and stuff with 
the parents' phone numbers and all that kind of stuff because it is really common for parents to look away for one second and their kids who already have been snatched up. And it and it's really sad that it it took it until 2000 for kidnapping to finally be labeled as a federal offense. Yeah, that's kind of just wild. Yeah. My mom in the 1980s, she was a teenager, but even like during her time, like it's just interesting how much different it was because I remember being a kid, like there was a lot more like during our time, way more awareness and 11 years old, I was able to have my first cell phone, which helped a lot, but kids during this time did not have the opportunity to have a cell phone, which would have helped them significantly if someone would have kidnapped them. Yeah, nowadays parents can track phones. Yeah. So with like, you know, you can have your kid wear a watch or this or that as well, which can be tracked if, you know, somebody doesn't get rid of their phone. Right, and there's a lot more security and amusement parks now as well, and there's usually like a lost and found area for kids that do get lost. Thank you for listening to another episode of Murders, Mysteries, and More. Remember to always keep your eyes open. You never know when someone's creeping.